All right, today is the day and we are here Leviathan Tuesday. We are working on one more of the components that's gonna be attached to the chassis, getting ready for that uh, rear, the cabin subframe to come. And we wanna be able to have good access and be able to get to those things really easy. Until that subframe's on, then we have to start working underneath. So we're working on many of those we can. We are putting on a rear bumper. This bumper is gonna to have to be real sturdy. It is also attachment point for the winch and any kind of extraction to this vehicle is all gonna take place on some of the hooks on the bumper. And of course, towing is gonna take place there as well. Anyway, let's jump in, take a look at building that bumper. Now to make a serious heavy duty pole point bumper, we're gonna use a couple of quarter inch steel plates running parallel to each other as the main structure of this whole thing. The outside plate actually has a couple of bends in it coming down 45 degrees and then 45 to bend underneath the vehicle. And of course, since there's um, some heavy anchor points, we're also gonna have a heavy or a good anchor in the pintle hook receiver. So this receiver is going to have a couple of extra plates added to it, welded to the sides of it, and then uh, brought up and bolted to this plate that goes between these two round cross tubes in the chassis. Now this little plate used to be the mechanism that lowered the spare tire down, but since our spare tire is too big to fit in here, we just took that mechanism out. We're gonna use it for an anchor point. So anything with towing going to that receiver is gonna be pulling also against these two round crossover tubes in the chassis. Should be plenty of strength to pull anything that this vehicle will be able to move. You'll see also a couple of oval slots in those uh, anchoring brackets to allow me access to the hole for putting in a pin. And there's also a couple of uh, very heavy duty anchor points that are gonna flank each side of the receiver made out of a half inch steel plate. They go through a couple of slots and will be welded to both sides of this uh, parallel quarter inch plates. Now this uh, parallel plate system is gonna make for a tremendous amount of strength. There's also be one last piece that will go across the top that all this will be welded to it as well. So it will be a complete box section. Now this thing's been held in place by a couple of bolts that go through the chassis on these corners. And I am now taking those bolts out and reversing them, flipping them around and putting the nut on the outside and then welding that nut in place so I can have kind of a captured nut system because I'm about to put on another end plate the reason there's going to be two end plates is because they're going to make up a bit of a bracket for our out drive system that's going to pivot on those corners. So like I said, once these nuts are on, I can now be able to cover that area up. I'm going to put this outside plate on. I've got to cut a little piece of tubing for the right spacing on that. And I'll put a bolt through there where the pivot point is going to be. Swing that plate to position and clamp it. So nice parallel and then go ahead and tack it in place. But that little pivot point, like I said, is gonna be for the flotation tanks that have outdrive motors in them that will lower down when this thing's in amphibious mode. And then, as I mentioned, this uh, top plate is the last piece that totally encloses this box section, creating the whole box section structure of this bumper. You also see this kind of a, makes a T pattern and there's a bunch of holes up there on that top piece. Well, that was actually where our uh, winch was going to bolt. But after uh, getting this far, I realized that once this thing's welded together, that this bumper would never come off, that it was kind of wrapped around those crossover tubes. So I ended up actually cutting this piece off of this top section and had I will have to adjust this whole thing, which is probably a little bit better anyway. I'll be building another whole box that will bolt to the top here. They'll hold the winch, but that box will be able to come out fairly easily. That way I can use it, take it around the front, use it on the front as well, or maybe remotely to help somebody out in a place where the truck can't get to. But now I'm just uh, putting in a couple of uh, end caps. There's a couple of open areas between those two parallel plates fitting those in there. I put a little mark on them because I'm going to go ahead and put a little uh, cut in there so that once those get tack welded in place, I can bend that top of that around over the top of that anchor, that half inch thick anchor plate that sticks out there. So we got all these pieces in place, 
get it tack welded all up, get ready for the final assembly of this thing. That little slot's been cut in that little uh, end cap. I'll tack, place, tack it in place. That little piece will bend over, like I said, right over the top of that half inch thick anchor point. And you'll see me spraying this anti-spatter spray on. This welder was really giving me troubles. The wire is feeding inconsistently, just kind of pushing on slow and then fast and getting a lot of spatter. So instead of uh, trying to figure out more what the problem is, I just need to get some anti-spatter spray and get moving on this thing, get it put together and I can work on the welder later. And now we're just kind of finishing up with this thing, getting it clamped right in position where it needs to be and to go ahead and uh, get some final welds on it. Now this is about uh, three-fourths the way done and uh, you're not going to see a whole lot more video of finishing any beyond this but I will show you as it is a little more finished some of the things that I did add that didn't quite get to see in this whole process. But before that we're going to take it over and uh, clean it up. It's a uh, of course, you get this metal in, it's always a little bit oily. So we're gonna degrease it, clean it up best we can. And you're not gonna see the joys of sanding and painting. I did put some primer and some paint on this thing. Later on in some other videos, I'll go over my uh, color scheme for this thing. But once we get this cleaned up, I will get some assistance. This thing weighs about, uh, about 70 pounds, I believe. And once I got some uh, fresh paint on it, I did not want to uh, mar it up while it was still a little bit soft. So brought my lovely wife out here and we're going to put it in place. You see, you kind of have to put it at an angle so that, that bottom bracket swings around the crossover tubes. But once it gets in position, like I said, flips right up, lines up with that plate so that those bolts can go through and hold it. Now here's one of the things I added that didn't get to see in the video. I put some uh, stainless steel plumbing nipples welded through the lower side of this bumper for some draining systems. And over here I put some, uh, like I said, half inch nipples and then I found out as I'm going to put it on that uh, somehow I ordered a three quarter inch fittings. So I guess I'll have to reorder that. On the other side, inch and a half fittings, and those seem to fit. This side is uh, the drainage for the gray water tanks. A little bit bigger fittings over here. Of course I could, since it's just gray water, I could drain them through half inch tubing as well. But when you're trying to get rid of stinky water, you don't want to wait around that long. So a good inch and a half fittings should be able to drain those tanks real quick. Also a little guard welded underneath those fittings so brush coming underneath those won't hit those. and. Uh, cause any problems but once we've got all the trial on for those uh valves we're going to go ahead and get this bumper bolted in permanently and if you remember we got those captured nuts two of them into the side of the chassis put those bolts through not a lot of room to ratchet so a lot of movement there and then that third bolt on the top and that should give us a, a good 80 90 thousand pounds of uh strength in the bolts on those sides so it should never fail so we're going to have these drain features here, of course, fitting wrong there, but we will have these drains so that we can easily empty out the tanks, which are going to be centered between a couple of the main frame rails on the subframe for the cabin. Just some flexible tubes that come down. We'll connect those, some flexible tubes that'll come down and connect those to those fittings so that we can drain them easily from the outside. So. It will be insulated some, but we want to be able to drain really easily in cold weather conditions where we are worried about some freeze up and those kind of things. Anyway, that is our bumper ready to rock and roll or tug and pull, I guess. All right, well, there you go. The bumper is in place. We will be building the next thing, I suppose, will be the three point mounts. They will not be attached to the chassis until the subframe is here, just so we can make sure they get placed correctly. We do have to drill a couple holes into the chassis, so we will uh, make sure that those things are all fitting on the subframe before we do that. 
Another thing here is I do have the winch coming so that I can verify some dimensions off of it before I build the little box that goes on top of the bumper and attaches to a crossover tube. Anyway, those will be a couple of the previous, a couple of the previous, these will be a couple of the upcoming projects that you'll see before that subframe comes, which is well underway and should be done pretty soon. So we better get on it. Anyway, that's our video for today. Thanks for coming by. Come back and see us again.